Hello and welcome to Audio Gyan. Today we have Uday Kumar with us, the man who designed the official currency of India, and we'll be talking about design nuances of the Indian rupee sign. It was introduced to the world on 15th July 2010. Thanks Uday thanks for being on the show it's a great honor to have you on audio gyan yeah thank you thank you for the invitation uh, to be uh, to have me on your show yeah uh, so to begin with can you just introduce yourself uh, my name is uday kumar and uh, i am an associate professor at uh, indian institute of technology and uh, i've been teaching in the past 7 uh, years and i teach uh, mostly visual communication stream uh, which is like graphic design typography branding and visual design yeah so basically that is what i do yeah mm-hmm. uh so the first question uh, which i have is uh, what were the design goals while designing the rupee sign uh, i mean visual harmony culture context or any other considerations uh, which you uh, identified before getting into the design yeah so i do consider visual harmony in my designs any any design which i work on i try to establish an harmony in the design uh, that's primarily because i want to bring a unity amongst the various visual elements that are in the design so that it gives a pleasing appearances so that is one of the uh, criteria i said and of course it depends on the nature of the problem which i address uh, the design problem so but most often i try to kind of come up with an harmonious design mm-hmm. uh, but was that a conscious effort while uh, designing the rupee symbol i mean just to keep the visual harmony among other currencies yes yes it is intentional so i looked at, i look at various principles and try to incorporate them as much as possible into the design because these are all established principles which are uh, make the design much more uh, interesting appealing and so on so the harmony basically kind of ties all the uh, parts of the designs together and makes it like a one whole one whole unit yeah so we we would have a single design so that's why i i while i do my designs i do consider all of these mm-hmm. aspects of it mm-hmm. uh, so what were your design goals uh, before getting to work on the design so mostly i follow the uh, uh, the brief design brief so this was as you know was a competition so uh, they had certain criteria for the competition and uh, they wanted some some aspects of the design to uh, Uh, rather the design should reflect the indian culture and history and tradition so on so forth so i kind of uh, set a focus on that and then i started to work towards that trying to bring out that indianness into the symbol so that was the formally first uh, objective yeah when i was creating the symbol so i often look at the design brief and try to see what is that they look for and maybe i also add on to it not just strictly follow what that design brief says so apart from that i kind of add my own thoughts and ideas and make it much more uh, enhance it well, much more than that so the the as the brief suggested it has to be uh, an indian symbol and uh, following the culture and the ethos so i was trying to uh, bring out that into the symbol so that was my focus while i was designing it mm-hmm. uh, but apart from indian values and reflecting the indian culture uh, were there any other design parameters uh, which you took into consideration uh, parameters in the sense that there it was a very challenging task because we had, uh, our india is a diverse country so and uh, trying to come up with a unified symbol was a challenge for me and uh, which which does not have any bias so then i try to incorporate elements that could uh, kind of uh, uh, eliminate all of these biases or uh, uh, defined opinion of certain things like So, so I try to pour, portray the flag into that because it, it has traffic feel, not just that, but also it appeals to all, all across all sections of the population and community. So, so I try to incorporate certain elements like that so that it even uh, so that it represents the Indianness as a whole. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next which I want to ask you is, uh, what was your process to evaluate that the symbol you are making or uh you arrived at will work across all the use cases uh, i mean with respect to shape size color uh, context uh, or language for that matter uh, what was the process i i try to see that in uh, the various examples that we would be see them yeah so i try to see them beforehand in the sense i envision various places that this could uh, the symbol would probably be implemented so i try to portray them onto those examples and try to see and i choose these examples based on the, the various printing techniques sizes proportions colors background and things like that 
So um, I kind of do a series of sketches and drawings and try to see them how this could look like or how it would uh, appear in various contexts and surfaces and uh, techniques and so on and so forth, how it will be reproduced in various forms. So I kind of work on all of these things after I kind of finalize my design and see that it works well or not. And then I fine tune them based on the various applications of the design. Hmm. Uh, so do you think there should be a process uh, or can there be a process to design something, especially when you're designing for such a large set of people? Actually, the beauty of design is that everybody has their own approach, design process, uh, to kind of come up with a design solution. Uh, if you put a strict like uh, step one, step two, step three, it kind of uh, limits the design in some sense. I mean, at least this is what I, I see it. Uh, maybe I might be wrong as well. So each one has their own way of approaching a design problem and then coming up with their own design solutions. So mine may not be the same as uh, another designer or uh, probably how a lot of other designers or design firms work with respect to their uh, logo design or a branding exercise or any design matter, uh, design project. So I, what I do is I do, like you already mentioned, that I do a lot of research, I study about it and try to understand the brief as much as possible and try to be very clear and then try to break them into units and try to understand them and then try to come up with a concept that will kind of do justice to the proper brief. And uh, I create a lot of ideations, a lot of iterations. So I do a lot of doodling. And it is a process and like uh, it takes time. So it's just evolving also. It is not that at the first go, I just get it right or things like that. So yeah, I'll have first concept and then I'll work on the next concept completely, completely different. And then see which looks better, which works well, which does not. And like I uh, like I mentioned in the earlier uh, question, that I try to see in the various applications which would look better in all of these applications. And so I do a lot of iterations, fine tuning. So it is just it takes time. I, it keeps evolving also. And then at some point of time, I feel that okay, yeah, this is good enough, and uh, this actually caters the client wants. So. So then I try to kind of put forward that design and make it finalize. Hmm. Uh, so given the context of the rupee or the currency sign itself, uh, is there any significance of vertical lines versus horizontal lines? Yeah, I did uh, study all the currency symbols as much as possible and try to understand their history uh, and how it has actually evolved and why. what does it mean. So, well, uh, so... Well, then I kind of learned that this uh, uh, dollar is actually came from the pesos, which they used to write like P and S. And over a period of time, that uh, they kind of become together. And only the vertical stroke of the letter P, capital letter P, had remained in the S. And then it became like the dollar symbol, which is right now. Yeah, the S with a cross of a vertical line over that on top of it. So, so likewise, there are some symbols which has some kind of uh, uh, written literature on that. And then, so I try to look at it and try to figure out why this line is there. Then you kind of see that all, uh, all the currency symbols around the world has this one commonality, which is like a, a line which cuts across them either vertically or horizontally. Yeah. So each one of them have their own significance and uh, I'm not uh, aware of all of them. So at least from the dollars point of view, I do know that it, it has evolved from the letter P and S and they come together. So in, in, the, in the rupee symbol context, what, what I try to do is I wanted to portray this national flag, which I already told you in the before, uh, because I wanted to come up with a symbol that which is like, a, uh, which represents everyone, a common man of the, our country. So, and also to do with patriotism and also the Indianness of it. So that's why I try to kind of uh, place, yeah, place an horizontal line instead of a vertical line and try make it a national flag, trying to portray a national flag flying high in the symbol. So it was like a symbolic gesture. So it was very, I mean, um, so you, you can see them as uh, the tricolor flag uh, there with that uh, horizontal line. So that was the intention. And also, apart from that, I wanted to create this equal to arithmetic sign, which means that uh, it it is like a balanced economy. So I want our uh, country's economy to be balanced and flourishing and moving forward. And uh, if you look at uh, business, it is basically it, you, you, it is a, a transaction, isn't it? It's like a give and take. So that, that, that's what the, the, it, 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 that is what actually the, the currency does, isn't it? You give a product equal, uh, the equal amount of rupees you give them. So the equal value, the sharing of values, yeah, uh, like in the, bar, uh, the barter system. So, 
So all of these things is what led me to kind of use an horizontal line and try to portray them into the design. Yeah. So so instead of uh, vertical, I wanted I thought and it was also like uh, the harmony also was kind of uh, played a bit into, into the design. So uh, so instead of a vertical, if you had put a vertical line across the letter R, R, it would have kind of created a complex form. And the horizontal line was uh, much more pleasing and appealing, and it fits better. Yeah, play by placing the line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was quite uh, insightful, actually. Obviously, there's so much to learn uh, from you that uh, an hour-long audio gain will also be less. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so. What I wanted to ask you is, uh, like, you have made something which is uh, almost equivalent to a national anthem, right? <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, so, uh, so what's your take on making immortal design? I mean, uh, we being designers, like, continuously struggle to make something which can last for a very long time. So, I wanted to understand what's your perspective on making design timeless. Uh, that's very difficult uh, actually so it's not there is no precise formula to make a design immortal so only time will tell and uh, so it's not easy and uh, so I, I, I in fact I don't have an answer for, for that so because if if you know the formula then everybody will kind of kind of just follow it and you will create or you will find the immortal designs everywhere isn't it so it, it there are a lot of factors play comes into picture and they, they play a crucial role and only time will kind of tell you whether the design is kind of works in the long run or not. So I'm I'm not kind of very sure of it. So. No, the question is more towards understanding your vision of making something timeless. Uh, I mean, there are few things which haven't changed their form since uh, inception. Uh, for example, hammer, right? Uh, so one of the reasons could be if you make any more iterations uh, on that. Uh, you might end up losing its function. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, yeah. uh, similarly, uh, what are your thoughts on making uh, your design last long, if not timeless? Maybe keeping it simple, uh, simple is would be one one of one of the uh, criteria. I mean, it's not. I mean, it's not like uh, all design has to be simple. But yeah, the simplicity can kind of uh, extend the longevity of the design, perhaps. Yeah, at least, I mean, at the moment, that is what I could think of. So making it a, a simple design and at the same time trying to kind of hit the nail in the sense, like trying to address the issue which has been in, 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 in both. Yeah. So, and uh, that could probably kind of uh, extend the life of a design maybe. So trying to understand the bare essential uh, quality of the design and then coming up with a solution which, which is very simple and uh, uh, at the same time, very effective in addressing that uh, problem. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. This is uh, slightly off topic, but was just curious to ask you that uh, after the demonetization and obviously uh, the new currency uh, notes coming into the market, there were a lot of uh, design posts uh, bashing the new 2000 rupee note. And uh, uh, I did my bit of research to understand what goes into making a currency and uh, uh, how complicated the task is, how many stakeholders are there in it. Uh, but wanted to ask you, what's your uh, take on it? Uh, probably the, the, the person who had designed it maybe had a brief from the government and maybe had done according to it. So because we don't know the nature of the assignment. So we, I mean, it is it is not the, I mean fair to kind of make a judgment unless we exactly know the what has been given and what was requested to design and so on and so forth yeah so it will be hard to tell for me so again i mean maybe the government took a decision and they wanted it in a certain way probably and that is why it is like that and they might have some security features oh, i don't know actually personally yeah so there might be a lot of things which which we are not aware of unless they kind of come up with some uh note or i mean uh some article or something like describing what was their process and idea behind it and so on. So maybe there'll be some light and we will be able to know exactly why things are that way. So other than that, we need, I'm just clueless. Uh, so I have no idea of it. <laughs> uh, but if you were given the chance to uh, design the 2000 rupee note, uh, what will be your like top two uh, goals or consideration uh, while making the design? 
uh it's for, uh, definitely security is the first and foremost thing yeah you you don't want to counterfeit the note isn't it that is the topmost of all all of the things more than the design i would say yeah because that is that is what the value of the currency itself is yeah so so the, the security feature is one of the first thing which i would like to look upon and try to come up with something and also uh, and uh, probably the the uniqueness of the note so oh, yeah uniqueness and the security i would kind of put it yeah to begin with yeah mm mm-hmm. uh so yeah that's it from my side uh thanks a lot uday for giving us your time and sharing some really interesting design gyan behind the rupee symbol yeah thank you um uh, it was great talking to you thanks for uh giving us your interview on audio yeah, gyan thank you thank you so much and that's it from today's gyan session stay tuned for more audio gyan next week till then bye